Hi everyone, we're live again. Uh, sorry about the kitchen in the background, that's obviously my kitchen area. <laughs> Has, we haven't done the dishes today, we've been busy videoing just for you. So uh, this is part of Geek 17 for, uh, for Craft Alive and the, the, called the Great International Craft Show. And this is um, part two of the tote bag. Um, now I'm sort of a, a bit ad-libbing as I go and just sort of, you know, giving you measurements as I go as well. Um, which I just forgot one. Oh no, I've remembered it now. <laughs> Brain fried. Um, so I've the first part of the video I did all the uh, stitching it down onto the fusible foam, and um, now I have trimmed it back. Okay, so it's all trimmed back. G'day, g'day. I haven't had any lunch yet. Just FYI, I've trimmed the sides back. And I have also then cut out my uh, lining and I've cut that out by just placing it on top, the, uh, the front on top and uh, cutting it out the same size as the fronts. I have also cut out, out of the lining, uh, this is recorded absolutely and it will go up on YouTube. So this is a front pocket. Um, you can do inside pockets if you want to. This one I'm not going to, just, just for time's sake. Um, so this is going to go on my front. Um, I have cut that at 10 by 16. 16? Yeah, I think so. 16, yes, by 10. And I've put um, a fusible interfacing on there as well. I've also got my two straps uh, ready to sew together. Uh, I didn't change my thread, probably should. Doesn't matter. It's still going to be fine. Um, so I've got this as one colour and this as the other. And I have put the fusible on that. Fusible interfacing. That's the $3 one. So I've, you know. Now the last video I was going to show you the, the uh, variegated thread that I've been using. Um, I just need to put my stitches down to three again. Okay, so this is one which is the purple. That is number eight. Uh, this is number nine. That's the one I've been using, that one, number nine. This one is number six, number 11. These are not on the website. They are purely just through me. Just tell me the numbers you want. Number 10, and I'll write them down. I'll go through the messages and write them down after the, after the demo. Um, that's number 10. And this one is number five. Okay, then we have number seven and one of my faves, gorgeous, number 12. Okay, so that's the ones that I'm talking about. They're called from Sandbest. Um, they're 100% poly and they're uh, 1,000 metres. So there's a good metre each on them. So that's those babies. I'm going to pop them down here. Oh, they're going to get in the way. Oh. Okay, so that's the threads that I that I was using on the top and the one in the bobbin is basically a result. Um, I'm going to sew my two, or the other tool that I'm going to use today is called the Easy Point Turner and I got this at G from G um, Academia Craft Sewing Centre. Um, it was $30 and it is a turner for... Um, handles and stuff like that so I'm going to use this tool looks dangerous doesn't it um, it's by Suki Sews and uh, G does stock it so I'm going to grab one of the uh, color uh, plain color ones and one of the batik and get a lin and I'm going to face it right sides together I'm just going to sew on either side okay right sides of the fabric so interfacing is on the other side and I'm just going to sew right down either side, um, quarter inch seam. And uh, then once I finish that, I'm going to turn them. I know. <sighs> Which is the hard part. Turning this type of handle because it's so thin is the hard part. So needle down. Let's go, baby. Off we go. Come on. I've still got the variegated thread on. Uh, if you're using um, fabric that has a right and wrong side, you want right sides together. Michelle, why poly thread, not cotton thread? Um, well, poly's a lot stronger. <laughs> uh, it's got a nice sheen to it. Um, and I find it works beautifully. I don't have, I have very, very few problems with poly. 
Whereas when it's, um, even a rosan is a poly pore, when it's 100% cotton, I tend to find it shreds and breaks a little bit. Um, I'm pretty brutal with my sewing, um, whereas a poly tends to be a lot more resilient, stronger. Um, you can use it in embroidery as well, free motion quilting, all those things, 100% all the way. All right. So that one's one side, and all I'm going to do is feed the next one in to do this side, and then I'll turn them both around and do the other side. Oops, right sides together. Please, like Lynn has, just please feel free to ask any questions that don't make sense or that you want some answers to. Just no question is a silly question. Um, you might be asking the question that someone else is too frightened to ask. So I appreciate all questions. And if you have an answer for someone before I get to it, even better. <laughs> so when this gets up on YouTube, um, you won't be able to see the comments. So you'll see me reading them out occasionally. Um, just so that you know what's going on during the Facebook Live. Uh, what you can hear in the background is the dogs running around under my feet. Man, do they stink. They need a good bath. <laughs> if I had time, I'd bath them. Too many things to do. Too many things to do. Right, so, I might actually put that camera down a bit so you can really see what I'm doing. That might help. Let's do that. You want to see what I'm doing, not my head. Alright, needle up. Let's pull that out. Turn that off. I'm just going to turn it around. Oh, I didn't catch that one, so I'm going to come in there and catch that. Come too close to that seam. Just make sure that you've caught all your seams, which I did on the others, I'm pretty sure. If you come too close to some of them, you might just have to do what I just did and go back in. All right, now the other side. I haven't trimmed the two bits away from each other. Oops, it goes into the foot. I'm just gonna sew them in a big long line, a bit of um, speed, Speed piecing. Hey, you two. Wait. Get out of that. <laughs> yeah, what are you two up to, troublemakers? Thank you. I have only ever used cotton, but we'll give Polly a go. Yeah, she's she's pretty. Um, it's a bit of a, a bit of a myth. The old uh, saying was to use you should only use 100% cotton. Blah 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 blah. Um, I very rarely do. I just find it shreds on me a lot. Uh, there's nothing wrong with using 100% cotton if it works for you. I just hate having to re-thread like last video six seven hundred times um drives me nutty so i know that with um a poly it doesn't shred so often so just trim off your bits clip them apart and trim off the other end and this is the part where we need some elevator music because we need to turn these around now I always get this a little bit stupid, but I get a little bit silly. So you place it on um, one end and you thread it through, I'm pretty sure, like this. I'm pretty sure that G does this a lot better than I do. If you want one of these easy tools, easy turn, a pointer and turner, um, just contact G at Kadena Craft and Sewing Centre. Tell them you saw them here so she knows that I've been looking after her. And before I get to the end, just that end bit there, turn that over and clamp that down and push that in. And then, not a bit too far up, 
bit closer and then you basically push it onto the other side says she grab the seam there we go just hold it in your hand like that and start pushing it's a lot easier you watch there we go yeah. once you get that started the whole process becomes really easy and then you let go of that and take it off hang on she says <laughs> hang on I don't want to let go of that little bit there we go it's like a big big thing like that so I just missed start what poly that you're discussing with poly thread yep um, and just pull it through like that look at that how quick was that to turn they are nightmares to turn so I'll um, iron that in a second and let's do the second one so you'll get to see this twice place in that end so the open end it's got a boy and a girl so we're putting the girl in Did I say that these days probably politically incorrect now place that in there feed it up all the way till you get nearly to the top and then just pinch that together just like that and then start to feed it over once you get that started like I said you just got to get that first little bit over it's best friend I everyone needs one of these everyone this is one of those tools that you look at and go oh my god I've wasted hours and and the the pain in your hands like <laughs> So then you get that little baby off. Hang on, I'm just going to keep it open. Just like that. And again, pull that through. Just like that. So I'm going to quickly iron these. Um, just put some elevator music on. That is the Easy Point Turner by Suki Sews. And it is $30. And G has them. And if she hasn't got them, she will get them in for you. Because that's the way she rolls. So bear with me while I just iron these out insert elevator music here <laughs> um because now you can't just leave them like that you've got to you've got to sew them so i'm just going to fight them get my seams right and uh yeah give that a bit of a press Penny, get out of that. She's found some um, garbage bags that she's decided that they seem that the noise of them is really interesting. So she wants to go ferreting in them. <laughs> All right. So that's one. And we're going to do number two. Right. Sorry to those on YouTube when you're watching this because um, you can't see, and you, you know, at least you can forward. <laughs> I should be apologising to those on Facebook, shouldn't I? Sorry, just fighting it, biting my tongue. Just having a moment over here. Okay. Alrighty. Done. Okay. Oh, talk to yourself, girls. <laughs> All right, so now that's done, um, we need to then stitch along both sides of that. Um, I'm not really going to stress about that brown being visible. It really doesn't bother me none. If that worries you, you're going to need to tweak it a little bit. Um, but for me and demo person, personal demo reason, sorry, I'm going to let it go. And I'm just going to 
it's going to have white underneath on this side and it's going to have um, the uh, variegated on that side uh, that again does not bother me if it bothers you you need to put the variegated in your bobbin okay so needle down and let's just boogie and I'm just doing it uh, around about oh, probably a good close to half inch away I'm just going to go all the way down one side Uh, oh, you know what? It's it's a really wobbly quarter to half inch, so it's not perfect. Just FYI. <laughs> Talk amongst yourself, girls, says um, Cherie. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, I've got a bit of a crease thing going on there. Get the next one in and feed it. are just two jelly roll strips that's it um, so two and a half inches by width of fabric that is it up, lift turn her around and start the other side needle down and off we go And I'm using a top stitch, so my stitch length is around about four. Yours would be about four and a half. And like I say, I'm, I'm not really being fussy about this, so a bit of a brown showing on the front, but you, you take your time with it. There's no rush for you. You could use your little magnet on the side so that you get a nice even feed all the way through. And I nearly did the cut off then, that would have been disastrous because it would have disappeared on up through my needle. Just trim those off. Again, trim that and that and the other end. You need to trim those two. That there. All right, so we've got our two handles stitched, done, and we are going to just pop them aside for a second, like that. We're going to get the front of our bag. Now, what we need to do here, whatever we do to the front, we're going to do to after not this part, but um, on the next bit, we're going to do to um, our lining. So however we put our bag together on the front is exactly how we're going to do it on the lining. So what I want to do is just figure out exactly where that's going to go. It's got an open end, so I'm going to have to probably turn that in on itself. There. Oi. Play nice. Uh, actually, what I might do is sew it over, just sew those two pieces together and then turn it out. That would be the easiest way to go. Oh, I nearly did the cut off again. All right. Then turn them out like that. Then it won't matter. Get that seam, and trim those bit of threads off, it's going to become annoying. Place that down. I'm going to put the seam at the bottom, um, and here's where I work out where to put, put the actual pocket. So I think with this one, um, just looking at it, I reckon I did that. Yep, I had it. Uh, Probably about three and a half inches from the top. So 
I'm going to figure out where I want it. Um, exactly. Got to remember the handle length. So the length of the handle is important. And we're going to turn those under like that. And that under like that. And they're going to sit side by side just like that. Okay. I'll turn that camera down a little bit so you can see more of what I'm doing. All right. So depending on how far you want the pocket away, you can have it a bit higher. Wherever you have it, your bag handle needs to hook underneath. And I sort of put it halfway. Hook that underneath about half an inch under like that. You're going to need pins. I reckon I've got put away so I'm gonna just grab some pins and a ruler okay ruler's overkill but should be right all right so to put a pin in that top bit just there want it halfway across like that right across I'll measure that distance from there to there in a minute I'm gonna pin that don't pin it to the back one as well just the front and I'm going to pin that along here. It's just holding it in place. Whoops, it goes the wrong way around. All right, so that is actually. Hang on, have I got it the right way around, Michelle? Sorry, I'm just trying to read this ruler. So we've got one, two, three, four. So it's around about four, five inches down. Um, you can have it higher, lower. I just want to make sure that it's the same one side to the other. And it's there. Now it looks pretty good. So bring that there and there. That one there. Make sure it's halfway across and there, nice and straight. You can check out how straight it is from the side of your bag. That'll be all right. Let me stay tucked under. And place that up there. I'm going to get rid of the underneath bit in a minute. I just need a pin down in place. There we go. Alrighty. Okay. So it is um, one, two and a half. So around about three and a half. And then we've got one, two, three and and probably so one, two, three. So probably a little bit further over that way. So I could probably manipulate this one either like that. And get it more evener, evener. And here. That should be a bit closer. So we've got half, one, two, and three quarters. Two and three quarters. So it's still a bit too far over. So I'm gonna not far over enough. So I'm gonna manipulate this side now. Okay, 
and that's about one, two, three inches, and it needs to go a little bit back, a little bit more. The easiest way to do it is to mark it first, then put it down, but me being me, I did not. Um, and like I say, you can have them anywhere you like. Looking good, thank you. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down here, um, and we're gonna go down up here. I think I actually might lift that up. Sew this bottom one first, if I will. So just hook them in. Sew along this bottom one and get them joined so they don't come out. Wait, we're catching on things. Okay, um, you can do it in black thread. I'm just going to keep using my variegated one because it's easy. It's already on there. Um, I'm going to do it about 1 16th. And I'm going to do a bit of reverse at the start. Stitch along there. So get to the other side, reverse and needle up and trim that off trim off in there under there then put this back and we're gonna trim off those extra threads and turn that under so it's level with that bottom bit trim that keeps repeating then starts again yeah people have had that all day um i think once you get onto youtube you probably find it won't do that um but uh, bub and um yeah you f might find it might be a um facebook glitch thing all right so i'm gonna say that, that pin that down all right now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna sew about an inch or so above the top of the pocket. So I'm gonna come across down all the way around here. Same on this side. Um, I'm gonna mark it with a pin because that's the easiest way to do it. I did have a couple pins there uh, for me. So I'm sort of gonna go about here and to get this other one the same, I'm just gonna fold her over. Around about here, about there, and that's where I'm going to sew to, um, and just around a big box, and that's going to hold that pocket in, um, and then we can take that pin out, but don't take that out until we've done it, otherwise it'll go loose. Um, you can start wherever you like. I'm going to try and stitch on top of the stitches I've already got there. If you want to, you can make a second run, so it looks like you've got a double line, um, either way is perfectly fine. So I'm just going to start here. And go back and forth. And go right to almost the edge. Lift and turn. This is where you need your fingies overs. Straight across until you get to that other stitch. Lift and turn. What's that cord on? That cord. It's very annoying. And then I'm gonna go up here. And that same line. I haven't got my gloves on, have I? me about here lift turn you can take that pin out now and keep that one in for just this minute I get to the other side 
Pulling that thread off from the front. Lift and turn. And when I get to the end again, I'm going to back stitch and needle up. Now, if you want to bring your threads behind the back, you can do that either either. And to do that, you would grab that thread, pull it through. You can see that green bit, and now that comes into there. And just leave it in there. It's not going anywhere. All right. Now we can do this side. Exact same way. Just make sure that's out of the way this time. And... Needle down. Oops, the day's wrong one. Couple of stitches. Move that out of the way. Get up to that needle. I'm going to just pop it in where that hole was. I'm going to lift, turn. I can see the needle, point, like the hole where the needle is. So I'm just going to hold my needle point on that. Lift up and turn again. And straight down. That side. Like I say, if I had my gloves on, I've taken them off. If I had them on, it would be a lot easier. I'm just, I know that line's there, but I'm going to go a bit crooked to it because it's sort of coming in a bit. So I'm going to make it my own line. And go up. Lift up and turn. Trim off the excess. Put your foot down. Make sure that little um, turn there is tucked under so that when you come across you catch it and then up need to put my needle up move it over again I've gone too far and up to where I started and do your reverse stitch and cross Cut off, you can bring through that, that bit of green thread. There it is. There it is. And then bring that through. And that is the pocket. It's not perfect, but it's done. You'll do a hundred times better than me, but it is on. Alright, so that's that one side. Now we need to make sure that these handles are the same on the other side. So, they're gonna go the exact same way. Make sure they don't have a twist. And what I tend to do is, I go, right, okay, you're around about there. We just need to make sure we get the same distance on the bottom. And you're about that long. All right, and you're about that long. All right, so turn her over. So if I mark this top bit, little pin, just hold it there. Those two are meeting each other. Turn that over. Those two are meeting. So these ones are lining up with each other. So just turn those over. I can always move them up and down, but um, I want them to line up that way. All right, now this way we want to make sure when we have them over and the top lined up, we lift that up and we have them roughly the same size. So I'm lifting that up there and I've turned that under. Okay, I'm going to pop, you've got a clip, you can use a clip, but I'm just going to pop a pin in that for now and I'm going to turn it around the other side. So I can see, I'm going to lift that up, and I know I've got less to turn under, but I can still turn it under, and then I'm just going to put a pin or clip in that, so that will hold that there, like that. Alright, then we can open it back out. We know we've got that in place. Again, we just need to make sure we've got the same measurements. And we want it even, even, Stephen. 
All right, so that's going to go there. Sometimes it's easier just to pop the ruler up and go right. That's where it's going. Tuck in your little bits. Make sure those edges are tucked in. Then you go this side. Line her up. Out there. And stay. Tuck in that little bit there. We don't want that jumping out while we're sewing. Same with that side. And pop your pin in. The next one is to measure again down from the top because I've forgotten already. Uh, we've got one, two, three inches down from the top. So we go one, two, three from the top. So I'm going to go here. If there we need to sew to. <clears throat> and over here we go down one, two, and three. Round about here. And we're going to sew all the way up and down here on both those. Okay. Alright, let's boogie. Again, I'm just going to follow uh, the stitch line, except at the bottom, I'm going to come really quite close. Um, to the edge. I really need my glove on, at least one. one. Just to hold this side. Okay. There we go. Use your pin as your stiletto, by the way. Mm. And just push that in. That's a very short turn, that one. It hasn't got much. Yeah. Oh, I just, I did it. I undid it. Unthreaded it. <laughs> I knew I'd do it eventually. I have to get that fixed. I have to fix that. That's going to drive me nutty. I haven't been doing it on the plain one, but this thread's um, a little bit more twist in it, so it tends to bounce back a lot easier. Anyway, can we do the next one? Like I say, I'm not really being fluffy about this one. When you do your own, please just make sure that you, you know, you, you're going to do it, do it with um, some nice stitching, nice top stitching and all that sort of jazz. Um, so that it looks nice and neat, because me, I'm not that neat. 
when it comes to this sort of stuff. And I don't do perfection. Don't do it, Michelle. Don't do the cut off. Alright, so trim, trim, pull it through. See if you can grab it. Sometimes you need a needle. If you can't get it to go through, it just means you've stitched into enough that it won't come undone. There we go. Done. All right, so they are on. <laughs> not bad at this time. No, it's not repeating as much. Um, they are on, ready to go. Done. Pockets on. Fronts ready. Done, done, done. Okay, now we're going to um, put it together, but I do have to watch the time. Oh, we've only got about 10 minutes or so. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to show you what I'm going to start to show you what I do next. Um, so what we do is we find the center of this. So fold it in half and find your center mark here. Put a pin in it. And do the other side. Find your center. Put a pin in it. I got that. Grab this. Fold it in half and find your center. The other side, find your centre. Yes, yes, it is foam wadding, 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 wadding I'm using, yes. All right, so that's that. And then you do the same to this one. This is your side of your bag. The same, find your centre. And... Center. I use pins with this because the clip won't give me an exact. You can mark it also with like a, a pen or whatever. Okay, once you've got that, and you're going to do the exact same with your lining, all right? You open it out and you get one side, place it on there, take one of the pins out, pop it aside. Place that pin in, and the other side. So you've got one on that side and one on that side. All right, that's one. I don't know why I did that end. I only need to do one end of these. I don't know why I did both ends, stupid. And then you get this side, place it on that one. Now these right sides together. Take one pin out. Turn it down, other pin, and pin the other side. So you've got them like that. Okay. Then we're going to just fold them in, get your lining, and do the exact same thing. Uh, by the way, you only need to find the centre of one end of the uh, sides, not both, just FYI. So that's one there. You can also like fold it like that and snip it because it's the lining. Um, it's a lot thinner, so you can sort of snip that little edge off, and that'll give you like a little point. And you can do the same with these. So if you don't have pins and you want to make yourself like a little point, you can do the same thing, like a little little um, part where they join. So fold that. Okay, and then again, right sides together, depending on your bar, your um, what's the name, your lining. You get that. Place it on that one there. Put a pin on either side. Yeah. One on there. And then do the other one. markers together one pin on one side and one on the other 
Now, here's where you get it gets a little technical. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to because we're running out of time and about half an hour's time I need to be um, with the thingy. What we're going to do is sew this very quickly, um, but we're not going to put them together as such. We're just going to sew these bits in. But what I want to do is mark a quarter inch from either end. Um, and to do that, I'm just trying to find my bow and pencil. Bear with me. I thought I'd put it somewhere safe. Where it is a gray little do it'll show up <sighs> all right so quarter inch this one has a table with quarter inch on it so I'm gonna get my quarter inch mark there and I'm like I'm using so you do a ruler quarter inch quarter inch and do the same with this so you would swing it around find your quarter inch find your quarter inch and give it a little bit more than a quarter inch that won't hurt either that one's a quarter inch there because there's a bit of bulk in there all right so that's my technical pencil marking. So I'm going to sew, um, I'm going to start there, sew forward, back, and then across and, and back again. So I'm going to um, stitch off each time, reverse back each time, I should say. All right. So needle in the down position, then I can take my pin out. And that, oops, it is. I'm going to go forward, and then I'm going to go back. Uh, just up to that line and I'm using my foot which is quarter inch and I'm coming up to that one come up to that mark go backwards forwards needle up taper out trim off okay then you turn it around and do the same to the other side ouch just a lift under, needle in the down position, take the pin out, go forward, back, cross to the other side, forward and back, and needle up, and then down, trim that thread off, so I'm going to get my way later. And that's those sides done. And then we're going to do the same here. So I'm using my grey lead mark. Needle in the down position, take the pin out. Forward, back, forward. Over to the next mark. Up to that line. Make sure you hit the line and back, and then needle up, in the arch, down, and trim. Okay. So again. Needle down. Forward. Oi. Go back. Come up to the other one. Go back. And needle up. Okay, so they're done as well and ready to go for next stage. So what I'll end up doing is probably a quick video sometime either tonight 
on just putting the rest of it together. Um, but we are so close, it's not funny. Um, oh, gosh. Hi. Dishes still aren't done. Uh, so um, the thread is um, sand best. It's $6 a reel. Okay. I've been using it the whole time. I'm actually piecing with it. If it was rayon, I couldn't piece with it, but because it's poly, I can. Um, and uh, in the bobbin, I have the Rosan thread. All right, so if you'd like a set of those, there's eight different colours, and you can have a set, and they're $6 each colour. All right, I will let you go, because at 2.30, we are in the Craft, uh, craft, craft Alive classroom, and they've got a new TV set up and everything. It's really good. Come down, watch that, and see me paint that um, that teddy bear that we had uh, uh, yesterday. All right, so we will try and get that on. If it's not tonight, it'll be sometime tomorrow. I see how I go. Have a lot to set up. Got it all going away on Sunday, so <laughs> we'll see you guys soon. Thank you for joining me again. Uh, do I have threads in my basket? Oh, clear. I have no idea, honey. <laughs> I'd have to have a look. All right, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye. I'll have a look for you, Claire. <laughs>